Kia ora. We're going to have a quick chat about vectors. Um, we use vectors in lots of areas. We use them to represent displacements, velocities, forces, accelerations. But for all these applications, there is some math that kind of works the same way in all cases. So we're going to spend some time having a look at these operations. So what we know so far about vectors is that we can essentially think of a vector as an arrow. So I might draw a vector like this. Um, and the, the things that characterize that vector are that it has a certain length to it. Um, it's got a length along there, how long that arrow is, and it also is pointing in a particular direction. And we can indicate that, for example, with some kind of angle, but we'll cover that off a bit later on. Uh, numerically, it's useful to put some numbers to this. So what we often do is we look at, uh, if, for example, it's in two dimensions, we look at a vertical and a horizontal component. So for this one, my horizontal component, or my x, it would be positive 4 because my arrow is going to the right, not to the left. So it would have an x component of 4. And this vector I've drawn would have a y component, or a vertical component, of negative 3 because it's going downwards. So it's negative. So it would be negative 3 along here. And so we'd say overall that vector would be the vector with an x component of positive 4 and a y component of negative 3, and we could write it in that kind of bracket notation like this. We'd often, when we give vectors a name, we often underline them or make them bold to indicate that we're talking about vectors. But sometimes, especially in one dimension, we just don't do this, so it can be a little bit confusing, things to watch out for. Right, so let's have a look at the kind of maths that we can do on these things. So we'll start off by looking at what it means to add two vectors. Now first, the first level on which we'll look at this is just mathematical. So if I was just want to do this calculation of those two vectors adding together, I can just ignore what it means altogether and literally just uh, do the calculation by adding the components of these vectors together separately. So it's going to be 3 plus negative 1. I'll do it in two steps, so it's kind of clear what I'm doing. Negative 2 plus 4, and it literally is just 3 minus 1, which is 2, and negative 2 plus 4, which is also positive 2. Okay, so if we're just dealing with components, that's all we have to do. Is just add the numbers up. We don't need to draw any pictures or anything, and, and we're done. But this has a meaning in terms of the visuals as well. So if I take my two vectors, let's just draw them separately to start off with. I'll make this one orange, so it goes 3, negative 2, is across to the right by 3, down by 2, so that's this one here. And let's make this one green, negative 1, 4. So negative 1, that means it's left, left by 1, up by 4, or something like this. Okay, there are my two vectors. Now when we add these together, um, basically what we do is we can move our vectors around and form them into a chain head to tail. So graphically, what we do is we add head to tail. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just move these around a little bit and form our vectors into a chain. So I'm going to start with the green one, and then I'm going to move this orange one so that its head starts at the, sorry, its tail starts at the head of the previous one. And now if I look what happens overall, this is my sum. So I start at the beginning of the first vector, it's the beginning of the green one, the end of the orange one. Overall, that is my sum, which is two across by 2 and up by 2, which just so happens to match what we just did here, which is good. So graphically, we can always just add vectors by forming them into a head-to-tail chain and just starting at the beginning and going to the end. Now, maybe you might wonder, well, I chose a particular order here. What if I did it, did it the other way around? Well, if I instead... I started with my orange one and added the green one on. So let's do it that way instead. And put that on there. You can see that overall, I still get the same results. It doesn't matter if we get them in the wrong order. We're still going to get that same resultant vector of two across and two up, which is my head to tail. And similarly, if I had, if I had three of them, um, let's say I wanted to add on a third vector, I could do that by just basically continuing my chain along and so there'll be three added head to tail into a chain, and then my resultant, or this vector sum, would just be the one starting at the beginning and going as far as the end. Um, so one thing we've learned about so far is displacements. So if we want to interpret this as displacements, we just say that if each vector 
is an individual displacement, then the vector sum is what you get if you do those displacements one after the other. So my picture I just drew here, this is saying that if I do a displacement of 3 across and 2 down, and then a displacement of 1 to the left and 4 up, and then a displacement of 3 across and 2 down, then my overall displacement is my vector sum of those, which is a displacement of 5 across and 0 up, so that would be the vector 5, 0. So that's adding. What about subtracting? Well, subtracting has a meaning as well. Um, so let's say we've got these two vectors, the same two as before, 3, negative 2, um, and so we'll draw it once again, we'll just draw them on here. So 3 across, 2 down. And then we have negative 1, 4 once again, so 1 left and 4 up. And now we want to subtract them. Well, again, we can look at it on a couple of levels. If we just do the maths, then we can do very similar to what we did with adding. We can just subtract the components individually. So that will be 3 minus negative 1 and negative 2 minus 4, which overall, 3 minus minus is plus, so it's going to be 4, and negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. So that should give me a vector of 4, negative 6. Now, how do I see this graphically? Well, it's a little bit different. If we want to understand what this means in a picture form, we take our two vectors and instead of putting them head to tail, we make them both start in the same place. So let's put that one there and I'll put this one here. So they're now starting in the same place. I just realized I've drawn one of these wrong. 3, negative 2 actually looks like this. That's better. Okay, and then what I do, so let's just put the colors on as well, that's the green one here, and then orange one here. When I subtract, the vector that I get is the one that starts at the second one and points to the first one. So it's this vector here. So if we maybe give these names, x minus y, is the vector that points from y to x. And you can see that we got 4, negative 6 in our calculation, and the same thing applies here. Um, if we start this point here, 4 across, 6 down, that gives me that vector, the same thing as we got from our calculation just before. So how, does, how do we understand that in the context of displacement? Well, if we just give these some slightly more meaningful names, so let's call... Um, Think of these as positions. So this is my final position, xf. Remember we can think of um, positions as vectors if we start them from zero. So this is my final position after, after some motion, thinking of it as a vector. This is my initial position. And then my displacement is my final position minus my initial position. And that's the vector that points from my initial position to my final position, as we talked about in our displacements video. Now, it's worth remember just pointing out briefly about what vectors in one dimension. Now, remember in one dimension, all our vectors can look like is this. <laughs> They're basically arrows that point either to the left or to the right. And instead of having sort of a complicated system, we just indicate our direction by a plus or a minus. So all the ones going to the right have a plus, and all the ones going to the left have a minus. And sometimes because we just basically treat these as numbers with a plus or a minus sign, it's very easy to forget that these are vectors at all. So for example, if we've got a displacement problem where we've got delta x1 is 2, delta x2 is negative 1, delta x3 is 5, then what is the overall displacement, which is what we get if we do those displacements one at a time? Well, let's just um, draw a picture of it. So this is literally delta x1 is 2, so this is delta x1. That's the distance of 2 across there, just imagine that's 2. Then delta x2 is negative 1, let's go back this way, that's delta x2, which is 
negative 1, so it's gone back halfway. Then delta x3 is 5, so that's what that one there looks like. And so if we add all those three things up, again, this head to tail idea works in one dimension as well, it's just they're all sort of flattened together. Then adding those displacements up to get my overall displacement, it will just be 2 minus 1 plus 5 which equals 6, which you can kind of see in the picture. The overall displacement here is the one that starts at the beginning and goes to the end. Delta x is equal to 6. Alright, one more thing we're going to talk about in this video, which is how do you compute the magnitude of a vector? Which is, remember, the magnitude of the vector is just like the length of the arrow. So in one dimension, it's pretty easy. So we've got a couple of choices. We could have a vector that looks like this, e.g. this could be 3. Or we could have a vector going to the left, this might be negative 1. In one dimension we just take the absolute value. So the magnitude of the vector 3 is just 3. The magnitude of the vector negative 1 is just 1. So when you're taking an absolute value, essentially all that means in, is to take any negative sign off and just have the, the, the number part. So the magnitude of this first vector is 3, the magnitude of the second vector is 1. The pluses and the minuses just determine whether it's pointing to the right or to the left. Okay, what about in two dimensions? If we have a vector delta x is 3, negative 2. Um, let's just draw that. So it's got 3 across and 2 up. So it's 3, sorry, 2 down. Negative 2. Then, so our vector looks like this. Well, this is just a right angled triangle. So we know that the side going downwards has got a length of 2. The side going across has a length of 3. And so the magnitude of my vector is just the length of that side of the triangle. And so Pythagoras tells us that that squared is equal to that side squared plus the other side squared. Now I put the negative 2 in there, just well, you, could, you could leave it off if you want because you know that when we square it the negative sign is going to go away anyway. So, so and then what that means is that delta x, the magnitude, is going to just be the square root of whatever's on the right, which is the square root of 9 plus 4, negative signs are gone, which is the square root of 13, which is going to be equal to 3 point something. I'm not going to work it out any further than that. So you can do this kind of approach for any, any vector. Basically just take the square root of the sum of squares of all components. So take the square root of sum of components squared. And that works if you've got three components, if you're in three dimensions, or if you've got whatever. Um, this, this formula is going to work. So we don't just yeah, it's called Pythagoras' theorem, it works in higher dimensions too, but if you just remember it as this rule of just basically taking the square root of all of the components squared and added up, then that will always give you the magnitude of your vector. And like I said before, we're going to defer um, anything about angles uh, for a later date. Okay, so that's about enough. We'll leave our discussion of vectors here for now, and see you next time. Kakite anō.